<laughs> right now, Love a film too. about a dog that's pretending to be a cat. Yes, they say dogs will try and please us, while cats only want to please themselves. So when they had a role to fill on stage in Glasgow, cats were told not to bother applying. Hey. Hmm. Italy in the late 16th century was the birthplace of opera, and here in Glasgow, Scottish opera are creating a little corner of Rome in their latest production, Don Pasquale. Gaetana Donizetti's comedy opera was first performed in 1843. It's a story of a foolish old bachelor who won't let his nephew Ernesto marry the woman he loves, Norina, but the couple tricks the old man to teach him a lesson. Andre Barb has designed the set, and Renaud Doucet is directing the production. Directors will bring their own vision to a classic. How are you interpreting this differently? Don Pasquale, in our story, is not this very rich baron, you know, baron. No, he's the owner of a run-down pensione. There are cats everywhere. So Pasquale is absolutely passionate and loves cats. But with a twist. He's allergic. To cats. Totally. When Norina stages a sham marriage to Don Pasquale to show him how awful life can be with a wrong partner, he relents. He allows the lovers to marry and is rewarded with a perfect gift. Norina arrives with what is a fabulous present for Pasquale, what he thinks is a cat. But unfortunately, he knows he's allergic, he can't take it. But it's not a cat, it's a dog. <laughs> in a cat costume. Responsibility for pulling off this disguise lies with an eight-inch tall pet chihuahua, stage name Bridget. The length of leg is three and a half. So how difficult is it to make a cat's costume for a dog? You can't control <laughs> a dog's tail because it wanted to pop out all the time. The first costume we made had legs in it, and when Bridget tried it on, the bulk of the fur was really difficult for her, and um, she just wasn't very comfortable. So we've got rid of the legs, and we've made more of a kind of saddle-type costume. We were very fortunate to find this chihuahua that was so still, so quiet, so gentle, and she was, you know, a good sport, I think. Ladies and gentlemen of the orchestra, this is your second and final call to the pit. Every member of the cast has a dresser, and tonight, I'm Bridget's. Does she enjoy getting dressed? If she doesn't mind, not at all. Darling, it's time for you to get dressed. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Bridget. Doesn't the tail wriggle free at all? It's the dress rehearsal, and tonight, soprano Ellie Lan is handling Bridget. Is she nervous? I am. The, the chances of, of the dog sort of wriggling and maybe putting me off or make, making me nervous is, is quite likely. Because you are singing very, very loudly. I mean, it's opera, there's no amplification, so you're mm -hmm. going for it. It's a huge climax of the piece. It's certainly a new moment, I think, for most people on stage. This is your call, please, for Bridget the dog to the stage. He shouldn't have married when he was so old. This means that the youngsters are getting married and Bridget will soon be on stage. Performances have been convincing, but has Bridget pulled off her cat's impersonation? I thought this was a cat because you have Angora cats, and I'm surprised to hear it was a dog. Well, I was trying to work out whether it was real or it was, if it was just a prop. It was a lovely ending to a lovely evening and a great show. Yeah, but that was a dog <laughs> in a cat costume. It's brilliant. That's amazing. Um, thanks to Carys and good luck to Bridget.